I like a nice cup of tea in the morning. As we try to live healthier lives, many of us are looking for caffeine-free alternatives for our daily cuppa. But among the organic, natural, fair trade fruit and herb teas available, is there a hidden danger lurking in some of the pretty boxes? And this is the culprit. Licorice root has been used in Chinese medicine for over 5,000 years, but if you eat or drink enough of it, research shows that it could massively increase your blood pressure, which would take dying for a cuppa to a whole new level. It tastes harmless enough, but within the licorice roots, there's a chemical called glycerizin, which the EU suggests you have no more than 100 milligrams a day of. So if a tea has got a large amount of licorice in, it's got to carry a warning. Contains licorice. People suffering from hypertension should avoid excessive consumption. That suggests for the rest of us, we can drink as much as we like, right? But I think people who are uh, eating licorice regularly are not aware of the risks. And the warning label in the pack, as, as you've so clearly shown, is totally inadequate. It just says that people with high blood pressure should be careful about taking it. Everyone should be careful because the risk of blood pressure throughout the range is not just those people with high blood pressure, the increased risk of a stroke or heart attack. I went to talk to patients at a hypertension clinic at Mayfield Surgery to find out which drink they thought would raise their blood pressure most in the long term. The tea. <coughs> Coffee. I take it, yes. Coffee. Definitely the hot chocolate. Coffee. Oh, electricity. Would it surprise the rest to hear it was the licorice? Yes, it would surprise me, actually. It would, because I think that would be something you think would be healthier for you. Uh, like the way it's packaged, it's an alternative to hot, co hot chocolate, coffee and tea. Yes, I would. I'd have thought that was the healthier one. Anything that's clear, it's you know, got no caffeine in it, and so you would go for that, yeah. Well, what a shocker. For most of the teas, drinking more than one cup a day will put you over the EU safe limit. But Janine only realised when I posted on social media. I've been drinking licorice tea for about 10 years, and I was drinking roughly 10 cups a day. Um, when did you realise you had high blood pressure? Two years ago I had to go in for a minor gynae operation, and they did my blood pressure at the hospital at which point it was 260 over 140 and they were in a panic. I was immediately put on two different types of tablets to try and bring it down, but it never came down completely, um, just enough to have the operation. So, what did Janine do after she saw my post? I got straight in touch with you about it and thought, right, yes, I'm going to give it a stop and see how I go, because I took my blood pressure that day and then thought, well, if I give it a week and it hasn't come down, it won't make any difference, because I was on two lots of tablets at that point anyway. Um, and it did come down very dramatically, so <laughs> so I carried on stopping drinking it. What was your blood pressure at the point you stopped drinking it? It was 155 over 109, and at that point I was having an aspirin a day and three different medications, uh, so, yeah. And what is it since you've um, cut, cut it out of your diet? What is it most recently? My most recent um, was 126 over 80, and I've cut out all the tablets as well as the licorice tea now, so, you know, it's actually normal. I spoke to the pharmacist about the fact that I wanted to give up taking the tablets because, I, yeah, the licorice tea thing. The pharmacist had never heard of anything connected with licorice tea, but said if I'm monitoring carefully to come off tablets one at a time, so that's what I've done. So, yeah, it makes me really angry that they don't label it better. You know, yeah, cigarettes do. <laughs> What do you think about the term, don't drink to excess? Well, what the hell does that mean? I asked GP Dr Bedson to have a look at Janine's readings. Off all her medication and not drinking any licorice tea, there is clearly um, a, a normal blood pressure uh, that this lady's achieved again. Now, obviously that's not scientific, but that's really suggestive that something was happening there with the licorice tea and probably is something that needs to be looked into a little bit for, uh, a little bit further. Do you think GPs should be more informed about it? Well, absolutely. I think people are quite unaware of it. We have, through Blood Pressure UK, our charity organisation, tried to make people more aware of it. But, I mean, it isn't easy. You've got, a, you've got new generations coming, and, of course, there's this big fashion now for licorice tea. So licorice consumption has probably increased with that, and it's claimed that these teas have some health benefits, 
I have no idea what they are. I think it's a load of old rubbish, but they're dangerous for people to drink, and I wouldn't recommend drinking licorice tea. Nikki, a yoga instructor with a really healthy, low-salt diet, was astonished to be told at a routine GP appointment that she had high blood pressure. She didn't initially connect it to her licorice tea habit. It was the tea pigs, um, mint and licorice tea, that I drank. So I left it for several months, and then what happened was I woke up one morning and my husband looked at me and I had a big vein in the side of my head that was really protruded. And he said to me, I'm really worried about this, really, really worried about it. We had a couple of friends in the village of doctors and he phoned them, they came around, took my blood pressure, it's 220 over 110. And they said, you know, you really are gonna to have to go to a doctor and get some medication for this. This is, this is really, really scary. So I thought, okay, at that point, I thought, right, I'm gonna to have to go to the doctor. Um, and it was at that point that I thought, you know, they wanted to medicate me, and in fact, they did give me medication, ACE inhibitors. And I thought, I'm not happy taking this. So I started surfing the internet to find out if there's anything that I could, you know, a healthier diet, something I could eat or not eat to, to you know, bring my blood pressure down. And it was purely by chance. I'd, I'd surfed and surfed and surfed and found this one little list of items and in it, halfway down, was licorice, licorice root. And, you know, a light bulb went and it was sort of like, that's what I've been drinking, you know, five, six cups a day. So it was purely by chance that I discovered it and then, of course, you know, stopped drinking it been well demonstrated in lots of studies. There's an issue about what dose of licorice, and particularly the active ingredient glycerinic acid, uh, that ha has this effect, what you need to have to have a substantial effect on blood pressure, but any form of licorice will put up your blood pressure, and that's dangerous. Well, one of the first things I did was to contact T-Pigs and actually say to them, like, I'm, I'm really concerned about this because I had read on the packaging that it said, you know, people who suffer from hypertension should not drink excessive quantities. Well, as I didn't have hypertension, it didn't mean anything to me at all. I didn't realise that it could actually cause the hypertension. So I did go back to them and I said, you know, I really feel the labelling needs to change because it needs to say that perhaps not so much of it should be drunk and that people should be aware that it can actually cause hypertension. They at the time said that they would address it and change it, although, you know, I mean, nothing was ever done. I mean, it is, it is a, a massive thing that really, really does need to be addressed. And it's really remiss of the tea companies that they're not, they're not addressing this problem. Now, there's no suggestion that licorice is all bad. In fact, it's a powerful and useful route when used responsibly. So what does Natalia Williams, a medical herbalist, prescribe it to treat? And licorice is a really excellent plant uh, to treat the coughs, especially when they're deep-seated, when they're chronic, and they need expectoration. So if somebody's got problems with the stomach, um, like ulcers, for example, or um, excessive uh, production of the hydrochloric acid, uh, so the, the stomach juice, and they have like um, a, a problem with uh, gastroesophageal reflux, and it is not for prolonged use, and it's actually advised everywhere for the supervised use by professionals. Okay, so are you concerned that 100% licorice teas are being marketed alongside alongside perceived healthy choices? Um, personally, as a herbalist, I am, yes. Um, it's, it gives licorice a bad name, and that is really, really upsetting. These teas all have enough licorice in to require the EU warning. These are 100% licorice, 70%, 50%, and 35 to 40%. Now, because we don't know where the licorice root is from or what variety it is, we don't actually know how much glycerizin is present. So, I asked the tea companies. Only three were able to give me numbers. Asda, 35% licorice, is 91 milligrams. And according to tea pigs, their 70% licorice tea is 100 milligrams. What's even more worrying is this third tea from Morrison's has the exact same amount of licorice in as the tea from Asda, and it has absolutely zero warning on. So since my email to them, they've promised me that they're going to take this product off their shelves nationwide until they comply with EU regulations. It's just another illustration of how little is known about this, even by the companies selling it. So what final advice would Janine have for people who drink a lot of the tea? For anyone with high blood pressure, stop drinking licorice tea or don't start drinking it. Um, it's just a no-brainer, really, because it's had such an effect.
And when it's time for bed, there's a lot to be said for a nice cup of tea.